Hello, I'm Chris Williams from Read Comics, They're Bad For You, the name of my YouTube channel. Or, if you're watching this on BitChute, the name of my BitChute channel is Comic Freak. Today, we're going to be talking about how the Joker movie is the first R-rated film topping a huge one billion box office. And that's amazing. Because the Joker movie has defeated all expectations and emerged victorious in a world that thought it would fail. At least all the SJWs and NPCs thought it would. After grossing $37 million internationally and $14 million domestically at the weekend box office, Warner Brothers' supervillain origin tale Joker has amassed an impressive $934 million in global theatrical receipts. So it is now inevitable Joker will become the first R-rated film, topping the huge $1 billion mark at the box office. And that is glorious. It's especially impressive that Joker will manage the one billion feet without a release in China, making it the first release film since 2008's The Dark Knight to do so. The total weekly tally for Joker over the past seven days, meaning the above weekend figures plus the preceding week, Weekday data tops 70 plus million. Joker would have to drop 50% every week starting immediately to fall below 1 billion. And since it dropped a remarkably low 24% in foreign markets and only 28% in North America this past weekend, there's no serious chance of Joker suddenly suffering 50 plus declines all of a sudden. And I surely doubt that will happen, even though the NPCs and ideologues for months before the release of the Joker tried their damnedest to try and sabotage the release of the Joker. It looks like the Joker movie will surpass all expectations and reach a billion, despite of all the protest from these ideologues. Even the imminent competition from Midway and Dr. Sleep next weekend and subsequent challenges from Charlie's Angels and Ford vs. Ferrari are likely to send Joker toward over the 50% line so soon and so quickly. Joker held strong in the face of multiple big branded challenges so far and I don't think it will start falling more than perhaps 40% worldwide until late November when Frozen 2 and Knives Out are likely to cause higher week to week dips for the clown prince of crime. Though I have to ask the writer of this article when he said subsequent challenges that have gone up against the Joker, are you referring to Terminator Dark Fate? That's not a challenge. That's not even a speed bump. That's just Terminator Dark Fate failing. Of course the Joker was going to trounce that movie. And as well as any other since Hollywood can't seem to make actually great movies anymore except for the Joker. Unless you count uh, Endgame and, uh, well, any of the Star Wars movies. Okay, you can't really count them at all because all of those movies were at best lame to bad. If the Joker sees a 30% global dip next weekend, another 40% dip the following weekend, and then falls 50% each subsequent weekend, then just those weekend receipts alone would push the film to about $995.5 million and add in the Monday-Thursday box office around the world for the next several weeks, and Joker easily passes $1 billion. In fact, I anticipate Joker will dance past the $1 billion mark in two more weekends, topping the magic number by Sunday, November 17th. If by chance it happens to fall more than I expect in the next two weeks, then I still don't think it will pass one billion any later than Sunday, November 24th. And should it hold even better than my moderate estimates, then it could potentially be in the billion dollar club as early as Friday, November 15th. Joker will be the fourth Warner Brothers DC movie to earn more than one billion in global box office behind The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, and Aquaman. It seems all but certain, barring some unforeseen major declines in weekly performance, Joker will top The Dark Knight's 1.4 billion receipts for third place on that DC film list, but there doesn't appear to be any scenario that gets it past The Dark Knight Rises. 1.81 billion come. The Joker's in good company. The Dark Knight and, well, Aquaman are good movies. The Dark Knight Rises was a fair movie and, well, better than some MCU movies, but hey. If The Dark Knight Rises is not as good as the other movies but still breaks over a billion, then I'd say The Joker's in tremendously great company because not only is it going to break a billion, it's going to be considered one of the best movies of the year. And that's something DC can put in its hat.
But getting back to the article, we learned that hat for DC is getting even heavier. Unless, that is, Warner decides to make a deal to edit the film for a PG rating for a China release. In that case, there would be a good chance, if not likelihood, Joker would surpass The Dark Knight Rises and become the second biggest DC movie in Warner history. It would really only require a mild edit, removing a few seconds from three particular murders and reducing the profanity by a few instances to get Joker into PG-13 territory, so I'm not entirely sure yet whether or not to expect a China release, but with a awards season starting, the buzz for Joker could get loud enough soon enough to convince Warner a China release's box office success would add momentum and further sizzle to Joker's already record-shattering performance, which can translate into better odds with the Academy's PGA block, for example. Yeah, I expect the Joker movie to win an Academy Award, and, well, with the promise of more money, yes, I would expect Warner Brothers to edit the Joker movie to be released in China soon. But even without a Chinese release, Joker is already a historic release that has helped significantly mitigate the problematic underperformances of several of Warner's other 2019 projects. With a relatively low budget, Joker's profit margins are going to be mind-boggling, and it doesn't frankly need Chinese theaters at this point. The extra revenue would be pure gravy and bragging rights at this point, but the studio's share of those dollars would be a small and they'd need a marketing campaign that might eat up most of Warner's share of revenue anyway. Check this space again soon and stay tuned for more updates on Joker's march towards $1 billion and for other news about Warner's DC superhero films. Disney and, well, their executives must be, well, shaken in their boots partially from fear and anger because now they have real competition in the world with DC movies soon to actually become a real threat once they actually get this universe down and pat. Once they do that, as others have said, the DC universe will most likely start to plow under the MCU. Because the DC universe is still the classic characters we all know and love, with Superman and Batman. They already have Wonder Woman and Aquaman down. If they can get every character, well, out there and, well performing at their peak, then DC will be able to finally dethrone Marvel from the top superhero grossing movie series of all time. Because the Marvel Cinematic Universe is done, it ended with Infinity War, even though they made Captain Marvel and Endgame. I don't really count Captain Marvel because it's a bad movie, and Endgame has problems of its own, with its stupid plot and the ex machina Marvel used to end the movie series. So Marvel is now dead, and not even one crying NPC bemoaning his fate at the sky can possibly stop the Joker from reaching one billion dollars. They tried desperately to dethrone the Joker, but he just keeps, well, dancing down those stairs with a smile on his face knowing that he is victorious. And all I can say is, they're going to make a Joker too, as I've heard. It's already been set up that they'll make a sequel to this movie. Does that mean you'll actually fight the Batman in this, in the next one? I would love to see this Joker take on the Batman. But all I can really say is, there are still problems. Well, namely superhero fatigue. I didn't bring it up till now because, well... The DC movies are performing well now, but we don't know how they'll do well in the future. And even though... The Marvel Cinematic Universe ended with Endgame. They're still going to try and keep making these movies, but they're going to put identity politics in these movies more and more. Namely, I can point to Captain Marvel as being the, well, patient zero for this. So even if Marvel tanks the market by putting identity politics in their movies, DC should consider ways to avoid that and continue to make good movies while ignoring NPCs that will try to harangue them to change their ways. If they can do that, DC has a bright future ahead of them. If you like this video, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is going around unsubscribing people, so make sure you're still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you have not subscribed, please subscribe to me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, read comics, they're bad for you. Then go over to BitChute and subscribe to my BitChute channel, Comic Freak. Hit that bell for notifications, hit that like button, and leave some comments down below. And could you please share this video? Share it on Twitter and share it on Facebook. Share it anywhere you think it would do the most good because YouTube is is not going around promoting their YouTube creators anymore, and it would really help me if you could please share this video. Now, keep listening closely. 
Keep checking back in future videos for more information on my own upcoming independent comic book, Scum Dogs. I'm Chris Williams, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video or review.